Hi, Andy. This is Unkshu. Just look at where I am. I'm at the edge of the ravine, but that's not what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be showing you a very interesting place because I've come here for this one. And I have to say that I've never been to this district. It's new to me, but I think that I can get out without getting lost. And well, this building is a church of Peter and Fevronia and that's why I'm here and in order to see what else what what's so interesting I can find here so I'm gonna show you around and tell you something more about it yeah that's pretty cool because I haven't ever been to this district and because it's pretty remote but not too remote if you think so I'm just gonna show you around it's very bright okay these are them the saints Peter and Fevronia it's written here this memorial tablet uh, was established on the day of the glorious dedication of the church of saints Peter and Fevronia of Murom in Tosna town uh, on uh, 8th of July in <laughs> Uh, 2016 and they were uh, the dedication ceremony was performed by Bishop of Gatchina and and of Luga uh, Mitrafan <laughs> his name was okay these are the guys and there are a lot of legends uh, that are connected to them because this mind-boggling story and it wouldn't be an exaggeration if I say that the story is really mind-boggling mm, it, It's connected to extraterrestrials and contactees and stuff like that That's why I came here because initially I was doubt if oh <laughs> This is a uh, uh, announcement against abortion okay and I was doubt if I should make this way but when I saw that this temple is dedicated to Peter and Fevronia and you probably heard that there is an opera um, about town Kishish um, ghost town Kitish and about Peter and Fevronia and it's a um, huge love story not only a um, mysterious story not only about extraterrestrials and stuff like that just look at these flowers so cool and those ones this is a church shop church shop, <laughs> icons, books, honey, souvenirs, can candles and gifts, stuff like that. Well, this is quite a rural place and this church is located on the edge of the forest. But as you can see, on the other side there is, um, there is the edge of town. Well, there is not too much of interesting stuff here and I think that the church itself is closed now but I was summoned by the legend really I didn't really pay attention as a legend well this is the strange cover <laughs> it's fluffy well my look is not so extreme today well, this is the cross dedicated to them. Peter and Fevronia. And that one is probably Grand Kittish. Mm. This tablet says that on this place there will be a big cathedral. Or maybe just some temple they say some temple but I think that uh, this church is a temporary thing so they will build a 
big church uh, out of bricks, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is the industrial street, but I'm not heading over there. I'm heading back and I can show you a couple very curious things on this street. Well, I hope you like the church, but I'm heading back. Um, no, I'm not heading over there. And I'm just walking in the middle of the road. That's pretty strange. Oh, that's a security guard. <laughs> I'm not going closer. This is a studio and arts school that is called Little Stars. I think it's for dancing or something like that. Okay, this is the street of Sholokhov. Uh, I gotta say that Sholokhov is um, one of our greatest uh, writers of all times. He has a very profound book that is called Quiet Dawn, meaning River Dawn. And I have to say that this book kind of helped me to join the conservatoire because I used this subject when I was writing an essay. It was very long ago, but I still remember something of that book. I used a few books, you know, describing them and describing all my crazy fantasies on those books okay and now you're gonna see something very very interesting sorry my stick is making horrible sounds so kind of yeah, walking down the street of Sholokhov and this is the art school that is called simply fairy tale Um, yeah, this is it. I don't think I should be walking along this side. This thing looks like a castle. And to be honest, I think that it's a replica of a kiyat. Um, it's, it's in Kazan, in Tatarstan. Well, a kiyat is a studio, uh, children's theater and uh, a, a lot more things of that, that, that kind. So I think that, uh, well, of course, Ekiyat has a fountain, a glass figure, um, statues of different kinds. And of course, it's, it cannot compare to Ekiyat, but I think that they had this idea because I clearly can see some uh, some relations to the Kiyat. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna... Wait, <laughs> the guy is probably cursing now. <laughs> the weather is improving and it's getting hotter. It's actually very hot, so I even regret it a little bit that I put on such warm leggings but it was chilly yesterday and I didn't know where to put myself in order not to get frozen okay uh, that one that you see right over there is as a school is a school uh, children's school for judo judo <laughs> we call it judo but it's probably should be called judo Okay, it's um, it's pretty cute too, and the street is not long at all. But uh, compared to other streets, it's pretty long. And well, you can see some people walking out of there. So I think that it's working even in summer. Maybe they have a children's camp like many other schools okay um, I was um, I'm just showing you around because uh, there are many open spaces and green spaces um, around the street so like I said the legend um, 
um, the legend behind this story is quite mind-boggling. About Peter and Fivronia. There was a duke of town Murm in ancient times. His name was Peter. And the story says that he was fighting some mystical creature that that they identified as fire serpent. No one knows what that fire serpent was, but unfortunately that Duke Peter was wounded and the blood of fire serpent, someone contaminated his wounds. So he got contaminated by the creature's blood and it was obviously some extraterrestrial blood and based on what the legend says I can assume that it caused some bad autoimmune reactions and he literally started dying because of that and nobody could cure him and they say that he had some type of leprosy but I don't think that it was leprosy based on that he was just having some scars and necrotizing wounds so but uh, he was suffering badly and no one could really cure him just look at this little little pass it's very cute yeah everything looks good when it's green right oh kitty <laughs> so this guy the duke peter of town Murum, he was uh, subconsciously looking for for a solution i'm trying to cross the road and kitties <laughs> kitties moving over there okay i'm just walking in the middle of the road as usual and no one can stop me i hope so <laughs> okay and he was subconsciously looking for the answers he was trying to survive and one day he saw it in his dream that there is a girl who can save all his issues and save all his problems and he started searching for that girl uh, gradually he found out oh that's Pseurishka shop some green yards gradually he found out that this girl really exists and he found out where she lives and she was some sort of a uh, witch because she possessed um, a lot of knowledge about herbal medicine so he came to her and she started uh, she, she kind of performed some trial on him for his intellect because she said she wouldn't help him if he he doesn't uh, solve her riddles later it turned out that she was just trying to find a husband <laughs> well because she was very concerned that she she was smarter than other girls and obviously she was a contactee and she couldn't find a husband among ordinary people so she <laughs> um, made that test in order to find out if he has average intellect or not so he somehow passed her test he solved all her riddles so she cured him because uh, well uh, she applied some uh, she applied some ointments on him she was feeding him with special food so he he was almost healthy and she asked him if he can marry her and he promised but then he left but the girl was quite smart so she she didn't uh, cure him uh, entirely 100% she left one necrotizing wound on him so that when he left the disease got spread it again and he regretted his deceitful deed so he came back he came back and he married her I admit that was not a very good method of um, 
to make a guy marry you <laughs> but well she thought that she was quite mighty as a contactee and <laughs> well she used her knowledge and power in order to find a couple that's what the story says and um, later they got to love each other Oi, mamichki, I just stumbled across something and they got to love each other very much because they were a perfect match if I understand it correctly that's what the legend says and even when um, even when he brought her to Murom his no novelty they kind of made a reward because they didn't want to have a duchess who was from the peasants, you know. And they just sailed away. He gave he gave away his throne and everything else because he didn't want to leave her. And then uh, the people just got them back. They demanded the duke back. So they just returned and everything was okay. And when they got older, uh, I don't know why they did it, they just became monks, both of them. And they were dreaming about dying on one day. So they really died on one day. And it was against um, the tradition to bury them in one grave, though so they demanded it. but. And they buried in them uh, in separate graves. But the next day, it turned out that their bodies were laying in one grave. This is pretty mind-boggling, don't you think? As a rule, legends don't lie. And I think uh, that the most mind-boggling part, astonishing part, is about fighting the fire serpent uh, and about the healing. The knowledge that she got from higher powers because she was a witch and yeah like I say knowledge is power I think that relatives just <laughs> told her how to cure him this mysterious disease and everything else uh, well if I if I look it up about the legend uh, about Grad Kitesh, mysterious thinking Grad Kitesh. I'll tell you later. There's too much to tell. <laughs> okay, sorry for the dull surroundings. I'm gonna stop filming because I already reached Baribin Highway, so I'm just gonna. And that is the school. Yeah, you can see kids playing football. Well, so I'm gonna proceed with my usual way, just um, buy some groceries and go to the village. I hope you like this uh, hike and the story that is behind this legend. Because I personally like this story and I like this um, district quite a lot. Okay, I gotta go. I hope you're having a good day as sunny as as the ones that we have bye bye